Kristen Howerton, I blog at Rage Against the Minivan. I'm Paul Martin, I blog at Paula Sophia. And we are friends. We come from differing political sides. I am definitely more liberal. And I'm a bit more right. And we are going to have a civil conversation about this year's election, which is just becoming more and more interesting by the day. It is, yeah. So, you know, I know we're both not fans of Trump, despite, you know, he, he being one of your party members, but it's funny because we've said like we don't want to give so much attention to Trump and yet it's so hard not to give attention to Trump. He's just Yeah. It's so hard not to talk about what yeah. what he's doing because it's so cuckoo. Yeah, yeah. And, and here he, we're fanning the conversation. We are. Trump, but and he's bringing up yeah, and he's bringing up great issues and he famously said uh, decades ago that bad publicity is better than no publicity that, yeah. at all. Yes. And you could just see it He's with almost that. every day, yeah. with the, some of the comments he makes, yeah. controlling the, the, the headlines. Okay, so this week, he's in a fight with the Pope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Among other people. <laughs> yeah. Among other people. So what's his, what's his beef with the Pope? Well, I mean, some people are saying that the, the God forbid, God help me. Paul is Catholic, the, by the yeah, way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the Pope was out of line, because the Pope basically said, um, you know, Christians don't mm -hmm. make these, you know, the, the insinuation was Christians don't make these kinds of comments. Yeah. Christians want to welcome people that are poor and mm -hmm. outcasts. You yeah. know, these, for example, the Syrian refugees are, are the poorest of the poor. Yeah. And he's trying to make a case for caring, where Trump seems to just want to build walls. Yes. Uh, and keep, you know, the, yeah. the, the Mexicans and the yeah. Muslims and anyone else out of the country. So the Pope is suggesting that Trump is not really a true Christian. There is a heavy implication, yeah. and I, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb here, but I've now a couple of times posted on Facebook that I genuinely have trouble calling people my Christian brothers or sisters mm -hmm. who would endorse Trump, and and I've gotten some flack from that. Maybe I've lost a few friends, but my point in it is simply, given Jeb Bush's faith, John Kasich's faith, mm -hmm. uh, Rubio's faith, yeah, uh, these, you know, whether you like them or not, are people that have a history of being committed to principles, morals, values, given the selection as a Republican of these people mm -hmm. versus Trump. Yeah. If someone is championing Trump over them, I I wouldn't know how to, someone who's racist, who's bigoted, who's yeah. full of hate, yeah. who's immoral, I wouldn't yeah. know what kind of Christians these are. Yeah. And I'm going on a limb to say that, but I yeah. think the Pope is kind of resonating this idea of this ain't a Christian. Right. Well, and then, you know, I mean, the candidate that I like the best is definitely not a Christian, yeah. but he... I'm a Bernie Sanders fan, but he seems to have a more Christian ethos than, yeah. you know, because he is very concerned with helping the poor. Yeah. Um, so he's arguing with the Pope. Trump has said publicly, you know, that the Pope shouldn't have said this, which I think is interesting because Trump has no problem publicly bashing anyone. It's true. And yet the Pope, he's like, wait, no, this is out of line. Right, right. He called, I think he called his comment disgraceful. Yeah. And again, it just gets to a certain, it's a new, a new genre of arrogance. Yeah. I and mean, this is somebody running for the highest office in the world. Yeah. Calling the Pope, you know, typically, know. and, and, but he, I think he riles up his base. Well, and it's like he can dish it out, but he can't. Oh goodness. And you, you saw that in the debate. Yeah. Uh, he was, he was, um, George W. Bush was a liar. Jeb Bush literally yeah. uh, is a liar. Uh, Rubio, uh, Cruz. They're all liars. Uh, and at some point, yeah. uh, Cruz said something like, you know, you have, he said something like, you have a funny, uh, you have a funny logic, Donald, because when anybody ever accuses you of things that you say yeah. or have said, you just call them a liar and you start <laughs> fomenting. And that's his plan of attack. Right. When they're repeating actual things that right. came out of Trump's mouth. Right. And I thought his attack on George W. was interesting. I mean, you know, I, I feel like Republicans think highly of him. He's got something like over an 80% yeah. approval rate, I think, either like nationally or in, in South Carolina. I mean, he's not running against him, so right. why yeah. ban that? Well, I think it's just his marketing. Uh, yeah. He knows that Bush, he's running against Bush, and it didn't make sense to me. And most mm -hmm. of the pundits after the comment for a few days said it was it was horrible strategically because he's got yeah. such a big lead. Right. Why go after somebody with an 80% approval rate rating? Yeah. But evidently, once again, 
he is Teflon Don because yeah. his his uh, the poll numbers haven't changed. Uh, I think they will. I still do. I, so. um, I still do. He still seems to me like a blowhard with no impulse control. <laughs> yeah. yeah, certainly no impulse control. And what's what's interesting is there was a town hall, some type of town hall yesterday, and Anderson Cooper, who I think is just great the way he interviews, uh, said, "Donald, let's talk about your comment that you made saying that George W. Bush lied uh -huh. and uh, knew that there were weapons of mass destruction." And over the course of two or three minutes. You saw Cooper returning to the question and Trump avoiding the yeah. question. And you would think that most people would watch and, and, and conclude that Trump's lying. Yeah. He accused him of, of you know, George W. Bush of being a liar. And, and now he's back. denying yeah. that he called him a liar. And Cooper said three or four times, you called him a liar. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to retract your statement? Mm -hmm. And Trump, he wouldn't answer the yeah. question. So. People just don't care. I don't think that there's a lot of critical thinking going on with people who are supporting Trump. No, I don't. I mean, I, I it's fear and <clears throat> you know, this idea that he's going to reinstate whatever people feel like they've lost. Yeah, and I'm not really sure what it is that someone thinks a president could reinstate. I Again, I keep bringing up the balance of powers, but he's yeah. not he wouldn't be the CEO of the United States of America. Right, that's not a thing. But most people don't seem to realize yeah. that he can't just yeah. begin building walls and kicking people out of the country right. and you know he, he needs Congress. Yeah. All right, so we've got a Supreme Court seat mm -hmm. open. Yeah. Justice Scalia passed away this week. Yep. I have never seen so much glee <laughs> yeah, there was some, yeah. about someone's death. That yeah. was awkward. Yeah. Um, but obviously Democrats are quite excited that um, Obama will most likely be able to assign a Supreme Court justice seat. Yeah. Although I guess there's a lot of fighting about whether or not he will be able to do that. Yeah. What's that yeah. about? Yeah, and so, I mean, you know, Scalia was the champion of the conservative agenda and yeah. ideology. He was unashamed about it. Um, I think, before we go there, I just, I'm so moved by, I was a huge Scalia fan mm -hmm. uh, for so many reasons. Um, one, I'm half Italian, but other reasons besides that. And one of the biggest reasons is this is a guy that is as far right mm -hmm. as they get in terms of his political ideology, um, how he viewed the Constitution, etc. And but he was the wittiest, most charming, mm -hmm. and best friends with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, which is who, interesting. Who's on the other end, yeah. and they would vacation together, they would go to the opera together, yeah. and to me, that's I mean, this is what's cool about this. What we're doing in a small scale, but that spirit has has almost vanished in this yeah. country. This idea that it we has. can actually be friends with, dialogue with people that just happen yeah. to have different views, yeah. and and Trump is playing up on that. He is. His whole candidacy again is based on this idea of attacking the person yeah. that you don't agree the with. Other. In his case, it's everyone: Republicans, yeah. Democrats, the Pope, yeah. anybody, everyone, really. But I think politics in the last decade or two has been side against side, yeah. and I, I actually have a friend whose grandfather was a U.S. president, and she has said to me many times, you know. Back then, I mean, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, you know, they would sit in Congress and they would argue, and then they'd all go out to dinner together as friends. Mm. Yeah. And that is just not a dynamic that we yeah. have anymore. Yeah. It is really, yeah. you know, yeah. antagonistic. It is. And, you know, as a Republican, I mean, it, it cuts both ways, you know, I think both sides. My experience has been as a Republican uh, that I remember in my early 20s listening to Rush Limbaugh on AM radio, which I don't recommend anyone listen to AM radio. Uh, as an aside, but or Rush Limbaugh, yeah, or Rush Limbaugh, <laughs> especially. But I remember just getting, you know, I was, I was young and I was fairly idealistic, mm -hmm. and I would get sucked into oh, yeah. his message, which was, which was this, just this one hundred percent commitment to hating anything yes. democratic, yeah, anything liberal, okay. and everyone democratic, yeah. And I think you fast forward twenty years, yeah. you know, these fifteen year olds and twenty year olds, thirty year olds and 40, 40 year olds. Mm -hmm who have been indoctrinated for a few decades with that yeah. rhetoric are a perfect primer for someone like Donald Trump. Yeah. It's this zero-sum game. Good I guys, agree. bad guys. I agree. And you know, I mean, I will confess that I grew up listening to Rush Limbaugh. Yeah. And listened to him in my 20s. And oh, wow. my, my grandfather listened to him, my mother listened to him. And so were you a, oh, yeah, you I were a Republican. Republican? Oh, yeah. Yeah, until maybe my mid-20s. Okay. So I can remember listening to him and all of us just getting riled up. Mm -hmm. And there was something, you know, it's like there's no greater bond than a common enemy. And like my grandfather would just, you know, go to hell in a handbasket. And, 
it was like there was something he got out of getting angry, mm -hmm. which is kind of gross. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, we would all listen to him and just, yeah, you know, yeah. work ourselves up. Yeah. And in these debates, you know, it's clear you look at someone like John Kasich, uh, to a certain degree, Rubio, certainly Bush. I mean, Bush is just a nice man. He has decades of reputation, uh, Jeb, of yeah. being just a decent person. Yeah. And he's he's being pulled in. Yeah. And you basically have to put on gloves and start punching if you're going to win an mm -hmm. election when yeah, you have someone true. like Trump setting the standard. Yeah. But Sanders, too, has you know nothing like Trump, but he does have this gravelly, you know, feisty, yeah. almost fierce... Uh, I don't want to call it anger, but it's more of a revolutionary it's voice. It's like a righteous indignation, right, sort of. Right, right. You, know, you mentioned Kasich, and someone left a comment on our video last time and said they wanted to hear more about Kasich. Would right. you like to extrapolate? Well, he's a, I, I don't know a ton about Kasich. Uh, I do know that he turned around the state of Ohio, yeah. and uh, he's, he's very well liked on an economic level. He has more experience, I think, than any of the candidates uh, because he's worked you know, um, in the federal government as a congressman, now mm -hmm. as a govern governor, uh, he, he, but he is coming from this point of view of, of thinking positive about America, yeah, uh, yeah. speaking uh, about hope, yeah. and believing that ultimately th things aren't as bad, you know, yeah. so you hear Rubio, you hear Cruz, Bush to a lesser extent, certainly Trump, and again, I talked about this last week, but uh -huh. they're describing a different country. Yeah. They're describing Haiti or North Korea right. or the Sudan right, or something right. like that in yeah. their depiction of how uh -huh. horrible things are, and they just aren't. So Kasich's trying to say, hey, things aren't that bad, but yeah. we can do better, yeah. and let's let's find common ground. Yeah. Uh, it's, there's just no sizzle in that. It's interesting that you've got these candidates that put such a high premium on patriotism and nationalism. And yet they describe our country as this sort of awful place that needs so much fixing, where I feel like I'm not that nationalist, but I also can acknowledge that our country is pretty great. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It could, yeah and it could be better. I did have, it could be better. I did want to say, um, I did have a few comments, I don't remember if they were Facebook direct messages, but on our dialogue saying, you guys need to disagree more. I know, uh, people keep saying that to me too. I, 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 that's interesting to me, I, yeah. I'm a huge fan of the news hour on Friday nights with Mark Shields and David Brooks and uh -huh. Brooks being one of my mentors on the right and and, uh -huh. and, and they, they disagree but it's it's a respectful disagreement right. and I think it's interesting you know I we certainly disagree on a lot of things especially you know on is, issues of uh, anyway I won't go, go into them but I, I think our the, the norm right now is come on if you guys from opposite sides yes. get into it with yes. each other as opposed to having yeah. a discussion yeah, about common ground. Okay, if that makes exactly. Sense. Well, and I also think you know, if I asked a friend who is very far, you know, Trump fan. I mean, I don't. You are you are Republican. I mean, you you know that is your ideology. But if I if I got someone who is a Trump fan, who is the Rush Limbaugh listening, blah blah blah, I just feel like there wouldn't really be much to dialogue because there's not much underneath. Right. No, it's true. You know. Yeah, and I don't. You know, I don't want to sound elitist but I mean he is he is appealing to a certain demographic yeah it's just a matter of fact you know Bush said Trump had said something about how he thinks Putin he likes Putin and uh -huh. he would want to work with Putin well Putin is a criminal yeah. and this this Republicans Democrats yeah. ambassadors and leaders uh, diplomats from all over the world know this right. and Trump just arrogantly says yeah, yeah I, I would work with Seems Putin cool. and Bush says it's a matter of fact yeah that we could not work with Putin yeah but again, the demographic Trump is appealing to doesn't really understand no. that. Trump says it. Right. He says it with passion and right. doing this. Therefore, yes. it must be true. Well, let's okay. Let's talk for a minute about the whole you know communist accusations that are yeah. coming out from Trump and from, I mean, friends of mine. I I had a friend um, last week on Facebook say, "How could anyone you know vote for a socialist when you look at what happened in Cuba and Russia and." named off a bunch of communist countries. So socialism right. and communism are not the same thing. Why is there so much confusion about that? Yeah, and again, um, Americans, United people from the United States generally, we live on an island, yeah. are ignorant. Yeah. I mean, that's my view. I've lived in Europe. Yeah. And they kind of mix them together, right? right? They're just those bad guys. Yeah. And, you know, and some would say Hitler and throw Hitler into that, <laughs> even though he's a fascist. But they just, <laughs> no. they haven't, they haven't right. really studied their 
tenth grade history, right. U.S. history. So they're worlds apart. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, you know, I ultimately believe that a society is better off when the government's leaving people to, to fend for themselves. Yeah, you are not a socialist. Right. But my point is, I but see. But you can see the difference. Well, and I could see why one would be enticed. So I don't mm -hmm. see you as this communist socialist enemy. Right. There are merits for socialism. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is look at the countries where the happiness ratio is the highest. Right. Based on, you know, deep studies. Yeah. You're going to find Finland. You're going to find Denmark. Denmark. You're going to find Sweden, and even Canada, mm -hmm. to a certain extent, is is, you know, they're not mm -hmm. socialist, but they have a much more socialist. Yeah. You know, program going on yeah. there than we do, and so I don't look at the, I don't look at people like you or Sanders and think, oh, they want to, you know, they want to lead us into communism. I think, hey, when the middle class is disappearing, what else are we going to do? Right. Yeah. So I mean, my plug for socialism is, you know, when you look at developed nations and nations that are running well, most of them are socialist, mm -hmm. and for me, it's like what makes a country or a group of people more civilized is their willingness to care for one another. You know, and there are different ways that, that people can do that, but I think socialism is a more civilized way of organizing a group of people and governing a group of people. It is not a system wherein your paycheck is completely garnished. And what's really funny to me too when people say, well, how do you feel about paying 25% taxes? I already do. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> I right. do right now. Right, right. So, okay. Yeah. I'll keep doing that, right. but my kids can maybe go to college for free and have yeah. free health care. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. It, but, yeah. It, it's complicated because yeah. on the right, you know, most Republicans, and I'll get into debates with people, they'll say, well, we need to have lower taxes. They never, they never understand tax code. They don't understand. They just know we need lower taxes. Right. And I'll usually say, well, hello. Right. Like, 20%, 5%, right. 3%? Right. Do you want to get rid of the police department too? Right. And the schools exactly. and the road? Yeah. You know, there, there's just this kind of, you know, in, in, in Norquist in DC has basically, you know, made this pledge that people have to sign saying that, you know, Republicans will always vote for lower taxes no matter what. Uh -huh. And the situation is more complex yes. than simply yes. we need lower taxes or taxes are too high. I, I don't yeah. I don't know enough about fiscal policy to even understand it, but I know enough to know that we just need lower taxes is simplistic. Yeah, and or we just need higher taxes for that matter is simplistic. Agreed. And I think a lot of people don't understand that we already have many socialist programs in place in our country course, and yeah. they'd be mortified if we got rid of them. Right. As you mentioned, the police, public libraries, public school. I right. mean, we are already practicing some level of socialism. Right. right. You know, and there, what is the tipping point to where a country is socialist versus not? I'm right. not sure, but we already have some right. of that going. Absolutely, and you're not, you know, you're going to have tens of millions of Republicans that are, you know, anti-government and pro-Trump, and but when it comes to their Medicare, yeah. you know what I'm saying they're not, they're not really debating whether we should have, you uh -huh. know, the government chipping in to help subsidize their. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are there are contradictions on both sides. Yeah. But I think Sanders, I mean, he's he's tied now with Clinton nationally, and this is just the most remarkable thing because you had. In 2008, Clinton, right? She, it was mm -hmm. it was her coronation, yeah. and then this guy named Barack Obama yeah. comes along. It was a fierce battle. He nudges her out at the end. Eight years later, here she is again. I, know. I mean, she was the Secretary of State. She has more experience and connections, mm -hmm. relationships. She's a woman, and she is fighting for her life. I know. Um, and it, I don't know if it speaks as much to. You know, I, I watch her. I watched her a few times this week, and I just I think her presentation is almost horrible. Really? She just well, she just comes across to me as, uh, and, and to many people, is just kind of angry slash smug and defensive. At least when I see her, I saw her last night, and um, there isn't. I mean, she's nothing like her husband. Let's just say that she doesn't mm -hmm. have the grace, and this is my view. Yeah. Um, but I mean, what is the deal? Why would Hillary be losing to some liberal, socialist, independent Jew from yeah. Vermont? You know, I mean, well, respectfully. I, okay, I want to touch on the perception of Hillary for a minute, though, because I do think as a woman, she's going to be judged as smug, shrill, angry, in in a way that is um, unfair, just because she's a woman. Okay. You know, I mean, there's that whole dynamic of. A woman is assertive and she's bitchy. A man is assertive and he's a leader. Mm. And I think that she's fighting with some of that just sort of like underlying misogyny that we have culturally. Mm -hmm. That people don't know how to deal with a woman 
being, you know, being assertive. Right. And you saw that with Fiorina too, I guess. Yeah. Because she started getting tough, yeah. I even thought, oh, come, you know, and I think there's some bias in me. Had you been a guy, a, a man, I would have thought, right. way to go, dude. Right. But it was a woman, I thought, oh, gosh. What's yeah. She? Yeah. Because, I mean, I think Sanders is every bit, comes off every bit as angry or probably more. Point. Right. But we sort of, is like a, a white dude. So right. it's just kind of like, right. okay, we'll give him a pass. But wait, Hillary, don't be bitchy. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, but I do think, you know, you mentioned her connections, and I think her connections are getting her in trouble. Yes, she has the experience of connections, but some of those connections are uncomfortable for people. Mm. You know, I mean right. the, you know, um, the the large corporations and the big banks and all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, yeah. for me, I don't really want those connections influencing our president. Right. Right. So. And as messed up, I mean, in some ways, as our system is, I forever will remember Churchill's famous quote: "Democracy is the worst form of government, comma." except all the others. And, and, and here we have a situation where you have this bozo reality TV guy, whatever he is, um, rocking the world with inflammatory comments, and then you have a socialist yeah. challenging a Clinton. Yeah. And it's a, to me it's a beautiful thing when you have um, Sanders just, I mean, not, not being bankrolled by any yeah. major you know, corporation, but just with a message and with passion mm -hmm. and through relationships, filling up arenas yeah. with, you know, um, what, whatever you think. Yeah. We live in an amazing place where, you know, you can get to this point yeah. um, with, um, without being a billionaire. Here's a question. Yeah. At what point in, you know, the last election did Barack Obama really unseat Hillary? And are we at that point yet? No, we're not close because I don't remember the details, but that thing went on for a while. It went right. past Super Tuesday. It did. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, it was neck and neck yeah. and neck and neck, and they fought back and forth. Yeah, so we could be watching this. Yeah, it's still, it's definitely Hillary's to lose still. Yeah. But, you know, with every passing day, mm -hmm. even just now, I, you know, we looked at that um, Fox report. Which I've never seen so many Democrats suddenly seeing this Fox News as a totally valid news source. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a bit of... Um, but he's, 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 um, he's speaking into that same, um, that same angst and frustration that the Trump, support, the Trump yeah. is. That government is screwed up, Washington is screwed up, it panders to the wealthy, and he is mm -hmm. speaking to that same angst. Yeah. Which I, my view is the whole angst is, is it's just this anti-incumbency angst. It's, always better mm -hmm. to say well you know this things I don't like the way things are therefore it's Washington's fault yes and again this is where people just mess up we have a system we have a constitution we have yeah. a form of government we have balance of powers yeah. this is as good as it gets yeah in, in the sense of we are the people yeah not those guys in Washington we are the people yeah. because we're the ones that elect these people into office and yeah. I think that's a big step for that a lot of people don't want to take because it's so much easier I do it in my own personal life but it's so much easier to blame yeah. Then is to say, well, this is the system. Totally. Right? Yeah. All right, so big week coming up. Yes. Uh, Nevada. Nevada tomorrow, uh, yes, tomorrow for the, Rep I'm, I'm mixed up, for the Republicans tomorrow. Why do they do this? I know, Republican? right? There are different times. Right. Next week for the Democrats, mm -hmm. and then South Carolina um, in the next week as well yeah. for each of them. The, the South Carolina you know, race on the Republican side is just, it's bloody mm -hmm. and um, it's a bloodbath and it's mm -hmm. just going to see, it's, I think we'll see Carson dropping out fairly soon, I would guess from what I'm hearing. Yeah. I don't think Bush will because he's not funded well. I've much from Carson at all. Yeah, Kasich mm -hmm. could be the next one to fall mm -hmm. too because he's lower in the polls. But, and, and again, um, the, the, the stars have lined up for Donald Trump because yeah. had there not been four moderates running, yeah. all of those votes would have gone yeah, to, to one. one of them. And it looks like Rubio could be that guy. Yeah. Still. Interesting. All right. We will be back here next Friday yeah. to talk about what happens in the, in the coming week. Um, this will be posted on both of our blogs. So find us there and leave us comments. See you then.